it's enough for that round there because these are flavors of the Caribbean after all. How you doing, Luke? Yeah, good. Uh, I need to get the panna cottas in straight away because they need to set. So now you can take a bit of a, a breather. Oh god, no. No. Way. no. Full on to the end. You take your foot off gas at this stage, you're destined for trouble. Your wife is a pastry chef. Has she, she is. given you any guidance with your dessert? Uh, yeah, she was the one that said uh, after uh, the main course, like Wagyu, it's really rich, to potentially do something that's quite light and tropical and fruity. So hopefully it pays off. If it doesn't, it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's just see how it turns out. If it goes my way, I'll be very happy. Well, if it goes your way, you'd be in the semi finals. Well, yeah. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Thank you very Good much. Good luck. Thank you. As I've grown as a chef, I never used to be interested in Bangladeshi food and spices and that sort of culture. But moving forward, I've learned to marry some of the flavours together with different cultures of food and develop myself as a chef. It's, it's a big day for me. I've got to be on the money to be the one that absolutely gets the best feedback today. Berhan, you're here, you're cooking. What are you cooking? Uh, so for main course, a crusted baked fillet of hay spiralized courgette matched with a lovely curried bean cassoulet and what i'm trying to do is implement some of my own heritage and spices into the dish um, and marry it with a lovely meaty fish great what about your food my dessert is the love of black forest gasha it's my favorite dessert okay. deconstructed but not take away from the original dish so the roots being the flavor all about chocolate yeah. cherries lots of alcohol yeah. i hope yeah definitely look on the invention test you didn't look happy it was definitely not a reflection of me, who I am as a chef. And from the moment I plated up, I was disappointed. Have you got your head together? You're yeah. focused? 100%. I'm, I'm ahead of where I need to be. I'm going to make sure everything's absolutely perfect. Listen, I'm going to let you get on with it. Sounds delicious. It's down to you now. Thank you. Burhan has a beautiful crumb on top of his cake. It's lemon with a smoked paprika, with a bit of parmesan through it, and also breadcrumbs. Mm. It's not easy to get the fish cooked right and keep that crunchy topping crunchy. Sometimes the steam of the fish can soften the breadcrumbs. He can't afford to overcook the fish and he certainly can't afford to undercook it. Mmm. And you can't afford to thin it out raw. Look at that one. I'm curious about his take of the cassoulet. He's bringing his Bangladeshi roots into this dish and I like that. Cassoulet, a French dish, but can be quite rich, it's hearty. I think it'll work quite well with the additional spices here. Very clever. Dessert is a take on a Black Forest Gatto. The key flavors for me are always going to be cherries, kirsch, and chocolate. The chocolate creme only needs to be set firm enough so that you can pipe it into a beautiful shape on the plate. If it's too soft, it will just run. Chocolate sponge in the microwave, it's a very, very light sponge, and in the modern world, for desserts, that's what a lot of chefs do. It aerates it. It is the lightness that customers always think, oh, I wonder how they made that. I think are even higher this year because normally chefs are trying to prepare for this while doing their jobs. Good luck as well at the beginning. They thought, oh, you're cheeky, Kelly. He said, oh, thanks. Good luck. He said, no, thanks. Whipped his ass. Professional master chef, unless you really think you can do it. So you're thinking the people who have entered think they're really good. And not all of them are going to be deluded. So mm. I may well meet somebody who's going to go on to be a bit of a superstar. Mm. Some of them will be deluded. <laughs> Most of them is deluded. Aaron, you've got two minutes left. Yes, sir. You're good to go? Yeah. It's an intriguing combination that Aaron's giving us. Braised crispy cabbage, mussels, roasted hazelnut. Sounds like the kind of thing you get in a fine dining restaurant. And then, oh, hang on, Bombay aloo sauce. So Bombay aloo is spiced potatoes in a sauce, or is he made a sauce? And I just hope he knows his Bombay aloo inside out, because it will be very disappointing if he's stamped all over what is a great dish. 
What's left to go on? You're running a bit behind time. Just the coriander and uh, some sorrel and some hazelnuts. Okay. So here we have a braised dish of cabbage with mussels, roasted hazelnut, and a Bombay potato sauce. Thank you. Thank you. I think it looks really, really pretty. He's done a great job on presenting it, and it smells fantastic. Mm. grown-up plate of food. There's proper spicing, there's a soft bit of cabbage in there. The uh, cooking of the mussels is perfect as well. It's sounding all the right notes, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's the sweetness of the cabbage, and then there's some pork. sort of sharpness okay, line look. coming through, and then the delicious spicing look. of that sauce. Okay, so it no, isn't very often that you eat a dish where the sauce is the absolute star of the show. Like that just no, I'm on lockdown, bitch. I'm gone feral. The simplicity of the humble history and how it's been braised and cooked and you still maintain the flavour and the sweetness, that's it. Underneath it, the Bombay potato sauce with a light heat, it's not overpowering, it is just fantastic. Love the little hazelnuts on the plate, the mussels bring a nice texture to it. Everything about this dish, I just absolutely love it. I think it is the best thing I've eaten in the critics round in a very long time. Minutes left. Yes, sir. Uh, dumplings are made. Yes. What's going on? Uh, I need probably about another three. Don't drop the ball now. Yes. Well, yeah, don't drop a bollock. We've got lobster and bone marrow dumplings from Nepal and a coconut sauce from Kerala. As I recall, I, I can't say I've eaten a lot of momos in my life, but sort of heavy and sticky in texture. Mm. Rich lobster and bone marrow running through. That could be fabulous. Mmm. Mmm. So could be disgusting, though. Yeah. Puree's made? Yeah. And you just need to grill the lobsters? Yeah. Let's go. The one thing that is kind of a flag is that there are a lot of potentially sweet ingredients. Lobster could be quite sweet. Carrot is definitely sweet. A coconut sauce, sweet. But there needs to be a real savoury dip. No, it doesn't. Is that how you wanted the lobster? Yeah. Happy with that, Fucking worry. I couldn't even think of a racist name. Right, yeah. so sauce on the jelly, anything else? Come on. Well done, Aaron. Well done. So here we have grilled lobster tail with carrot puree, lobster, and bone marrow momo. Now that is over, but in the kitchen I was not relaxed. Uh, it was a tough ass today. Um, so they like it. <laughs> it cooked tough ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, baby girl. Look at the foot. It's not too strong. There's a really savoury punch to it. Not even getting and bone marrow, which has got yeah. that sort of savoury note that you want to sort of counterbalance the sweetness, it's a faultless dish. Yeah. I'm looking for fault, and I'm struggling to find it. Lobster, mm -hmm. is difficult. The momo, delicious. In fact, I could eat a plate full of those. Mm -hmm. The sauce just wraps around everything. It tastes sensational. Mm -hmm. Two amazing plates of food from Aaron today. Oh, the chef means business. Finish. How are we looking, Guillaume? We got five minutes. 
Okay. Les tata. Guillaume's giving us a real blast of a kind of Provençal summer flavors. Courgette, goat's cheese, tomato, marjoram. The courgette flower is delicate. And there are a few delicate flavors here, but he really needs to punch the tomato jelly. I hope that's not an afterthought. It needs to be fresh and bright and make itself felt. Mm. Gail, they're ready. Are you finished? Uh, I just need to put it in. All right. You happy? Yeah. Good luck. Smile. Today I cook a stuffed crochet flour with goat cheese, tomatoes and marjoram. We have a carpaccio of the baby courgette, smoked bacon and courgette puree, and uh, tomatoes and ginger jelly. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy. Fucking enjoy. I'll give you enjoy, a froggy can. <laughs> okay. I feel like I should be one of those impeccable French ladies with sunglasses like hubcaps. And a tiny little yappy dog on my lap. That's because it's so precise and dinky. But this is no kind of wallflower of a dish. The goat's cheese filling for the courgette flour is salty and rich. And they are lovely courgettes, and you show them off to their best advantage. This courgette puree has got a lovely smoky back note of bacon, and that really works well. The one thing that hasn't really worked is that tomato jelly. It's mm. a bit watery and, and broken down a bit. There are some really nice, bright, summery flavours here. But mm -mm. I find myself admiring it rather than loving it. There's a really nice, delicate side to Guillaume's dish. The puree is delicious, it's light, got a little hint of bacon in the background, and the courgette flour. The mousse is very, very, very light. You've got tomato just running through it, which is, which is really nice. It does lack a bit of wow factor. But it is not a bad dish at all. It, it does work together. We've got flavors of courgette, bacon, tomato. It's really nice. Guillaume, you have about three minutes for you to serve. Yes. How are we looking? We are good. So I worry slightly about Guillaume's mane mm. uh, because the roasted veal tenderloin, it being a, an almost fat free fillet, not a lot of flavor there. Then we've got butternut squash. That's sweet and can be quite bullying. Mm, the sweetness of soto de apricot, that veal and sage sauce, whether the veal tenderloin is actually going to make any impact as the centerpiece of that dish, I'm slightly dubious of. Is everything going to fire? Uh, yeah, I'm happy with everything. My sauce is maybe a bit bitter, but I hope that the sweetness of the apricot will balance with it. Season right. It's lovely and pink. It's, it's beautifully mm. cooked. It's tender. 
I, I wish there was a bit more seasoning over that. Oh, no. Flamed whiskey with the apricots and the chanterelles. That's a beautiful combination, but for me, it doesn't work on this plate of food. No. Because the puree is also very sweet. Overall, two good dishes. Mm -hmm. Beautifully executed, mm -hmm. beautifully presented. Mm -hmm. But points I like, and the points that I don't like. What's going on, Luke? We've had a little bit of a hiccup. The wagyu never made it in the water bath. So I backpacked it and uh, then went and fridged my panna cottas. I got to go back and bath it. So I think I've caught it in enough time, whereas uh, I can cook it properly. <sighs> it sort of sounds like a fairly traditional dish. Steak, onions, potato and a sticky sauce. It's not a game changer, is it? No. But I'm very happy that it's heading my way. <laughs> Yeah, right, can't. Steaks are done. Yeah. I think I might have got away with this one. Mm. I hope you're hungry. Bring it on. For my main course today, I have pan roasted wagyu ribeye. Cauliflower puree, cauliflower that's been roasted in bone marrow, served with a fondant potato, Swiss chard, caramelised red onion, and a beef stew that's been enhanced with a relish that's native to where I'm from in Sheffield. Thank you very much. Thank you. The darkness of that sauce is almost terrifying. Yeah, it's too bleak. That wagyu beef is superb, very tender. Well cooked, well seasoned, fabulous, and the jus has got a lovely depth of flavour. The, uh, the Yorkshire relish does give it acidity, and that really works. Mm. I like the puree, but the roasted cauliflower, you can just get the edge of beefiness from that bone marrow. But if it hadn't been there on the menu, I wouldn't have known. Luke is very lucky. He found that beef on time. Beautifully cooked, the marbling of the fat is delicious. And then you get <laughs> to that fondant that's got beef fat running through it, and it shouldn't be, but it's so delicious. Yeah, <laughs> so good. It's yeah, it's so fatty, it's so, fatty. It's I mean, so it nice. This is it. I mean, this is knockout sauce in flavor. It's a Yorkshire portion of food, beautifully cooked by a proper Yorkshireman. Yeah, proper Yorker. I have. Is the kind of dessert you get taught very early on, so there's no excuses for getting the panna cotta on. Around it will be fruity explosions of salsas and curds and bits and pieces of coconut and sesame. Right, what? Sounds like a very fine dining dessert, doesn't it? You're on time. You look like you're almost finished there, Luke. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty happy having the panna cotta set, so that's uh, that's a bonus. Not too set. No, I just, it's just right. It's got the right. Well, I think it's got the right wobble, but it's not much style to my opinion. Is it? <laughs> Let's just go and enjoy it. All right, your best plates. Yep. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Yep. So for dessert today, I've got the coffee cup in my car. Uh, that's served with a lime salsa. A sesame brandy snack, some toasted desiccated coconut, and a bit of Thai basil to finish it off. Hope you enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Like, to have the opportunity for them to eat my food is like so heartwarming that you, you get to put yourself in two courses and just get everything you've got. And if it's enough and they enjoy it, then it's, it's going to be even, even better. It's a very nice panna cotta, actually. It's not oversweetened, it's very refreshing, it's light, it's creamy. You're getting a lovely coconut flavour from it, which is picked up with the um, garnishing of the desiccated coconut. The Thai basil is a really good choice of garnish because it's just bringing a bit of complexity to what is otherwise rather a sweet dish. And I do like his brandy snap. It's bubbles, it's crisp, it's crunchy, it gets stuck in your teeth. Those are all things I like. 
so pleased that the panna cotta has got the right wobble and great flavors for mango passion fruit uh, the crispy brandy snap to to go with it for me maybe just a bit more rum somewhere in this dish because it did talk about the caribbean and when i yeah. think of caribbean i think of rum still a good you dish you fucking though. racist fillet of hake with lemon zest, smoked paprika and panko breadcrumbs, spiralised courgette with a curried cannellini bean cassoulet. Thank you, thank you. I'm not normally one to complain about big portions, but this really is a big slab of fish. That said, it does smell delicious. For maybe some time. job of that pig and the spicing in his crumb is fantastic and it works so well with the heat from the panini beans and what you need is another element which is cool and will refresh the palate and this courgette entanglement it's impossible to eat and it doesn't do the, th that job I, I would totally agree i love how strident the beans are and he has cooked the fish absolutely perfectly so it's two out of three really isn't it Castellet has a nice spice to it and it's beautifully cooked. The fish is also beautifully cooked and the crumb on top has got a lovely warmth and spicy heat to it as well. I just think it's such a big piece of fish. Just a little bit of seasoning. Uh, the same with the courgette. It's got a nice bite to it still, but it needs a bit more seasoning. How was that? Yeah, just sort of thought it would be slightly intimidating. <coughs> well, you're halfway there. Dessert, is that going to be on tap? Just going to check my crema. Uh, at the moment, it's looking not set. How's it looking? It's not great. It's still quite runny. Burhan's dessert is most of the way towards being a Black Forest Cafe. The only thing that I'm slightly concerned about is we know these flavors work together. It might just be a very nice version of something we've had before. I don't understand so that. The majority of them is just quitting. We get to the pot black. No one wants revenge. It's Friday night. Yeah, that's when the sharks come out. Yeah, but it's also when the little fishes come out. You're getting that the big sharks are going to be out. And they get beat. And like me, when it's obvious that I'm, just, that I'm the weak player, I don't even entertain. <laughs> For what I produced in the time on Salt mm. Abbey. You shit as I am. Unfortunately, the place slightly more strategic game. A game of odds. The more different players are sure the more chance I might have of actually winning a game. But there's a lot of me, the old fashioned bit of me. Rather than, oh, I've got beat by that guy, so let's let him beat me ten more times and fuck up my win ratio. No, man. In ratio that exists. So the microwave sponge <laughs> to have that against the rich chocolate caramel, and then the crunch of the soil. Yum and yet three. And the cherries, well, they're just very, very nice fresh cherries, which have been doused in a bit of booze. And if that doesn't speak to you, then we are never going to be friends. We are going to be friends because yeah, I yeah. could eat a vat of those cherries, but it's that dark chocolate rubble that's making the whole thing really work well. There's no two ways about it, you've certainly got the flavours of a flat forest gatto. 
crumbs got a lovely texture to it. The cherries are beautifully soaked in kirsch. The cremo is, is rich. It's got flavors of, of cocoa and chocolate running through it, but it's not set. That's a real shame. What a fabulous day. Great cook-off for the critics of Mouthful Chefs. I think they all came in this kitchen and delivered what they needed to. There's no disasters, there's no dramas, and they all cooked some fabulous food. Hats off to Aaron. What a day he had. First dish up the cabbage for me was my dish of the day. It was sensational. Followed by his lobster main course. The dumpling with bone marrow and the lobster claws. I think he really impressed today. Not just us, but the critics. For me, Aaron, without doubt, has just secured himself a place in our semi-finals and well deserved to. That leaves us with three more chefs to discuss. Guillaume's starter today was very elegant, very delicate. It may have needed just a little bit more to lift it up above some of the other good things he's cooked so far in the kitchen. His main course, veal beautifully cooked. I just found the, the Gerolds with the pumpkin too sweet. But his food is interesting. It intrigues me. Luke, during the invention test, was our chef of the day. One thing that he didn't get quite right was the cooking of his beef, but he did make up for it by cooking it on top of the stove. It was big, it was bold, it was rustic, but full of flavour. And I thought the panna cotta was excellent. Maybe a bit more rum and a bit more fruit garnish because it was a pretty big panna cotta. Burhan in the invention test was told to up his game and he certainly did that today. Some lovely combinations, his spice cookery was fantastic, beautifully done. His dessert was inspired by a black forest gatto. Unfortunately, his cremo didn't set. I like the flavours of the kirsch running through the cherries, the chocolate soil. You know, there were good flavours on this dessert. We have some very talented chefs, no doubt about that. But we can only take our strongest through to our semi-finals. I'm a bit 50-50 at the moment. I'm not ecstatic because I haven't done as well as I should have. But at the same time, I'm hopeful. Um, I think we've just got to be hopeful at this moment. To be able to, to go back and tell my wife that I'm a semi-finalist, I'm not going to say that I'm going to cry. It's not going to be a teary thing, but it'll be quite close. Oh, Thank you. I'm at this stage, I will be really sad. But Good. Send you home. But I did my best. Congratulations, you are a semi-finalist. Yeah, you're a semi. We only have space for one more chef to go through. Come white boy, Missy of you. Our second is the French white boy, Packy. <laughs> it's Luke. See, so he told you. Well done, Luke. Congratulations. Berhan, Guillaume, you've had a great competition. It's the end of the road. It's the end of the road. Oh. It's the end of the road. Motherfucker. Honestly, I'm really gutted. The road is ended. Still very young, so I'm not gonna stop here. Nah, your telly time is finished, mate. Instagram, but you just bugger out everything. People gonna drop off with you like flies. They did an elbow. In the I, I um, don't it, to be which one? The two contestants that won. So. <laughs> 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 I keep saying I'm Max do I'm something. Whites do something. It's an absolute honour to be in this position. Peckies do something. Whites do something. <laughs> There's my punchline. <laughs> Next time, it's a bird. What? Fat bird? In the black bird? Fat. Happy so far? Oh, she mm. can't cook. I've been happier in my life. Boobies. Yeah, she can cook great. <laughs> I can do this. Feel it. Pressure, pressure, pressure. It's delightful. 
really wonderful. I think that is untouchable. You're a genius. Mm. G fucking yeah. Yes. I do believe that's us all caught up. It's fucking genius. Yeah, there are no more episodes to watch. What the fuck? Right, that's You're going back to the shop. Oh, well, thanks. It's very kind of you. I'm not really sure why I have to go back to the <laughs> shop because there's no master chef. I'm not a telly scheduler. Come on, cunts, faster. Take your whooping like a man. Oh, he said, yeah, please, I'll have another smack around. Mm. All right. Here you go, mate. This one's for you. Wow. Didn't stay at 44 quid for long. Mm -mm. How much is it now? 99. Oh, they made a mistake. <laughs> Oh, my favourite kind. We make Ella. Mm. And release the hounds. That was perfect German.
Mm-hmm. 